Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm showing you how I make peach crisp. Hey everyone, today I am filming my first video since having my daughter, my first baby girl of three kids, Ella, and I wanted to make sure I got this summer recipe to you before peach season was officially over. We're making a peach crisp, it's nice and easy, so let's go ahead and get started with our peaches. You're going to need two pounds of peaches. Make sure you weigh them before you cut them. And if you want to peel your peaches, you certainly can. Personally, I don't, I don't think it's worth the trouble, but the skins do stay a little bit tough even after baking. So do what you will with that information. You can certainly peel them. So wash your peaches and we are going to go ahead and cut them into slices that are, I like to go just between one fourth and one half inch. Thinner slices are going to cook faster, thicker slices are going to take longer, obviously. And while we are doing this, you want to make sure you have your oven preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So of course we wanna core our peaches and cut them. When we moved to this house, gosh, over five years ago now, uh, Zach planted a nice little orchard on the property. And our peach trees have, for the first time, given us some significant fruit. Now, it's not as pretty as the grocery store fruit, and we're still using grocery store peaches here, but I'm going to sneak in a couple of our homegrown peaches as well. That one's a little skinny. Try to make your slices as uniform as possible. That way your peaches cook evenly. And just a quick reminder, if you want the full printable recipe, the list of all the ingredients and instructions, you can always find that in the description. Change of plans, my kids wanna eat the homegrown peaches, so we're just sticking with store-bought. You can use your favorite kind of peach for this recipe. I like to use yellow peaches, not white peaches. And I believe the ones I got from the grocery store for, the, for today's recipe were labeled California peaches. All right, you're going to need a large mixing bowl. Let's put our peach slices in there. Now hopefully you have some peaches that are already juicy and sweet, but to help amp this up a little bit, we're going to add some sugar. I add a fourth cup of granulated sugar. If you have really juicy, really sweet peaches, you can certainly tone this down a notch, but I wouldn't cut the sugar by more than half, which would be two tablespoons. We're also going to add about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Fresh, fresh squeezed is best if you have a fresh lemon, but you can use bottled lemon in a pinch. This just adds a little bit of freshness and nice flavor. We're also going to add a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Peaches are one fruit that really work very nicely with vanilla, so a little bit of that is going to give us a nice flavor. Then we're also going to add a little bit of flour, which will just help thicken the sauce that these peaches are going to make, or the juice. It's going to help keep things a little bit thicker and not too runny. And I like to add one fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one fourth teaspoon of table salt. Sprinkle that over and just use a spatula to toss everything together until the peaches are nicely coated with this mixture. And once we have everything mixed together, we're going to set this aside and let it sit and it's going to get nice and juicy while it's sitting. It already smells so nice. All right, let's set this out of the way and let's make our crisp topping, which I really love this crisp. It's sort of like an oatmeal cookie on top of the peaches. It's amazing together. So we're going to start with one cup of oats. These are old fashioned rolled oats. We'll also be adding three fourths cup of all purpose flour. One half cup of firmly packed light brown sugar. You'll also need a half teaspoon of baking soda. This is a nice ingredient that keeps the topping from becoming too firm. It helps it to break and crumble easily. I also like to use 3 fourths teaspoon of ground cinnamon. The cinnamon is technically optional, but it really does add a nice depth of flavor and it's pretty subtle. We're also going to add some salt. Of course, you will need one half teaspoon of table salt. I'm using my fourth teaspoon, that's why I'm using two of them. And let's whisk everything together until these are nicely combined. Break up that brown sugar, get those oats nicely incorporated. All right, and let's cut some butter into the mixture because of course that's our next step. We're going to be making like a crisp streusel-like topping. So you need a half cup of very cold unsalted butter for this recipe. I pop mine in the freezer for, I could say like at least 10 to 15 minutes before I use it, that way it's nice and cold. And a lot of times when I'm making a crumble or a streusel, I will melt the butter instead. But I've found that when I am making something like a crisp, like I did with my berry crisp, the melted butter mixture can get a little bit too soft when I um, bake it. And I want this crisp to be nice and crisp. So we start with cold butter and that just works really well. And you wanna cut this into at least eight pieces. Obviously cut it a bit smaller. It's a little over ambitious today, I guess. We'll drop our butter in here 
scatter it. And we are going to use a pastry cutter to cut the butter into the mixture. When we're finished, the butter pieces shouldn't be larger than like a chocolate chip in size. A lot of people say pea sized, but I feel like most of us around here probably know more about the size and shape of chocolate chips than peas. So we'll go with chocolate chip size. And you want a nice crumbly mixture that if you pinch it, it will uh, cling to itself. All right, my assistant decided to pop in today to help. What are we making? A peach crisp. Peach crisp, yes. So we're just cutting the butter in. All right, Rhett, huh? how does that look? Good. Does the butter look nicely cut up? Yeah. Okay. All right, this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna check this over with my hands, make sure the butter's nicely broken up, no large pieces. And like I said, if you pick up some of the mixture, it's going to look a little dry and crumbly, but if you pinch it with your hands, it's clinging together, isn't it, Rhett? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we wanna see. Let's grab ourselves a baking dish. You are going to want to use an eight by eight baking dish for this recipe. And I have lightly greased it with butter. Your best bet is to use a glass or ceramic dish. The recipe is written to bake mm. in a glass or ceramic dish. This one's ceramic, but glass would be fine. If you were to use a metal baking dish, you're going to need less time. Right, Rhett? Yeah. So let's grab our peaches yeah. and we want to give them one more quick stir. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything's nicely distributed. And we're going to drop these right in the pan and let's spread these peaches evenly. All right, now we're gonna take this topping and we're just going to evenly distribute it over the peach crisp. Can I? Sure. So we're just gonna take it and we're gonna spread it over. You can take a piece and spread it over. And I like a lot of crumble topping, but I find this isn't too much. It works nicely with the peaches. It's a nice balance. It's like a crumbly oatmeal cookie. And just make sure it's evenly distributed. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll dump the rest over it. Yeah, so wash our hands. We do, we'll wash our hands in just a minute. But first, now we can go ahead and transfer this to the center rack of our 375 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven. I find it usually needs to bake for about 28 to 30 minutes. If your peaches are a little thicker, it might even need a little bit more time. All right, let me get this in the oven and then we'll get our hands washed, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Good way to tell that it's done is the top should be turning a nice golden brown. The peach mixture should be bubbly. You'll probably be able to see some on the sides. If you're using a shallow dish, make sure you bake this on a foil lined baking sheet just in case there's any spilling. And you can also use a fork to pierce the peaches. They should feel perfectly tender when pierced with a fork. All right, now once this comes out of the oven, it's going to be super, super hot. So I've let this cool, it's probably about 15 or 20 minutes now. So it's not gonna burn us, right, Rhett? Yeah. So we can go ahead and taste test this. I want you guys to see how it looks. It's always the best part. We'll dig in. Oh yeah, you've got the juicy peaches, that nice oatmeal-esque topping, oatmeal cookie-esque topping. The ice cream. And we're gonna top it with some vanilla ice cream because that's the best, isn't it? And we'll do the ice cream, right? Yeah. Nice scoop of vanilla. That is how you make my peach crisp. If you like this, you might also like my Maryland peach cake. That's another great way to use up those summer peaches, isn't it? First the ice cream. Of course, the ice cream. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment. If you try it, I would love to hear what you think. I'll see you next time. Yeah, next time I'll see you later. How is it? Yummy. Yummy? Can I try it? Mm, that's good, isn't it? That was a good peach crisp. We're making, do you know what we're making? No. What are we making? I know. Rhett, no! <laughs> what did he do? Nothing. He's just Rhett. Peach crisp. <laughs> what are we making? No, no. <laughs>